the betrayal of Empress Dowager Cixi. As the 19th century drew to a close, China found itself at a critical juncture. The Qing dynasty was teetering on the edge of collapse, and the pressure to modernize had never been greater. In this volatile climate, the young Emperor Guangxu initiated the Hundred Days Reform in 1898, a bold and ambitious attempt to rapidly transform China into a modern state. The Hundred Days' reform aimed to overhaul the Chinese government, military, and educational system. Guangxu, inspired by Japan's successful Meiji Restoration, believed that only radical change could save China from foreign domination and internal decay. For 103 days, edicts flew from the palace, calling for the establishment of a constitutional monarchy, the modernization of the military, and the promotion of industry and education. However, these sweeping reforms alarmed the conservative factions within the court. They viewed the changes as a direct threat to their power and the traditional Confucian order that had governed China for centuries. Chief among these conservatives was Empress Dowager Cixi, who had long been the de facto ruler of China. Fearing the destabilizing effects of the rapid reforms and the potential erosion of her own power, Six, I decided to act. In a carefully orchestrated coup, she gathered the support of key conservative officials and the military. On September 21, 1898, Sex, I made her move. The young Emperor Guangxu was placed under house arrest, and his reformist allies were purged from the government, with some executed and others exiled. This dramatic power shift reaffirmed CIXI's control over the Qing dynasty and marked a significant betrayal of the young emperor's vision for a modern China. The coup of 1898 showcased CIXI's determination to maintain stability and control, even if it meant stifling the rapid reforms that many believed were essential for China's survival. In 1899, a new and dangerous threat emerged within China, the Boxer Rebellion. The Boxers, a secret society known formally as the Yihikun, or Righteous and Harmonious Fists, believed that they could expel foreign influence from China through mystical martial arts and divine protection. Their slogan, Support the Qing, Destroy the Foreign, captured the growing anti-foreign sentiment sweeping across the country. Initially, CIX, I saw the boxers as a useful tool to counter the increasing foreign influence and Christian missionaries who were perceived as a threat to Chinese traditions and sovereignty. She tacitly supported their activities, hoping to harness their nationalist fervor to strengthen the Qing dynasty. But the boxers' violence quickly spiraled out of control, leading to a widespread rebellion. Foreign legations in Beijing were besieged, and the situation escalated into a full-blown conflict. Sexi, seeing the chaos unfold, declared war on the foreign powers in June 1900, aligning the Qing dynasty with the boxers. This decision proved disastrous. The eight-nation alliance comprising Japan, Russia, Britain, France, the United States, Germany, Italy, and Austria, Hungary responded with overwhelming military force. Beijing was invaded and the foreign troops marched through the Forbidden City, symbolizing China's humiliating defeat. Facing overwhelming defeat, Sex I fled Beijing in disguise, along with the young emperor and the imperial court. The resulting peace terms, formalized in the Boxer Protocol of 1901, were harsh. China was forced to pay massive indemnities, allow foreign troops to be stationed in Beijing, and implement further humiliating concessions. The Boxer Rebellion underscored the Qing Dynasty's weakened state and CIXI's complex and often contradictory stance toward modernization and foreign influence. CIXI's reign was marked by a series of betrayals by foreign powers. The Opium Wars in the mid-19th century had already exposed China's vulnerabilities, leading to a series of unequal treaties that eroded Chinese sovereignty. Foreign incursions, territorial losses, and economic exploitation continued to plague the Qing dynasty throughout CIXI's rule. Despite these challenges, CIXI navigated foreign relations with a blend of diplomacy and pragmatism. She sought to balance the demands of foreign powers 
while attempting to preserve China's integrity. This delicate dance required careful negotiation and often involved making significant concessions to avoid further conflicts. One of the most significant concessions came after the Boxer Rebellion. The Boxer Protocol not only imposed heavy financial burdens on China, but also allowed foreign troops to be stationed in Beijing. This intrusion into the heart of Chinese sovereignty was a bitter pill for CIXI and the Qing court to swallow. Despite these setbacks, CIXI managed to maintain a semblance of control and stability within China. Her pragmatic approach to foreign relations helped her navigate the tumultuous waters of international politics, ensuring that the Qing dynasty could endure in an increasingly hostile world. As the 20th century dawned, Empress Dowager CIXI, now in her late 60s, decided to step back from day-to-day -day governance. She allowed a younger generation to take charge, hoping they could manage the challenges facing the Qing dynasty. However, the instability and the incompetence of her successors soon prompted her return to power. During her brief retirement, the Qing court struggled with internal conflicts and ineffective leadership. Recognizing the need for her steady hand, CIXI resumed her role with renewed vigor. She implemented more cautious reforms, aimed at stabilizing the empire and navigating the turbulent political landscape. In 1908, a new crisis emerged. Emperor Guangxu, who had been under house arrest since the 1898 coup, died under suspicious circumstances. Just a day later, CIXI herself fell gravely ill. Before her death, she made a crucial decision. She named the young Puyi, her grandnephew, as the new emperor. At just two years old, Puyi would be the last emperor of China. By ensuring a controlled succession, CIXI aimed to maintain the continuity of the Qing dynasty. However, her death on November 15, 1908, marked the end of an era. The Qing dynasty, already weakened, faced an uncertain future without her formidable presence. Empress Dowager CIXI's death marked the close of a significant chapter in Chinese history. Her legacy is complex and multifaceted. On one hand, she is criticized for her conservatism and resistance to radical reform, which some argue hastened the decline of the Qing dynasty. On the other hand, she is recognized for her efforts to modernize China in a controlled manner navigating immense challenges with strategic brilliance. Recent scholarship has offered a more nuanced view of CIXI's reign, acknowledging the difficult choices she had to make and the immense pressure she faced. Her legacy is one of resilience and adaptability, a testament to her ability to steer China through one of its most turbulent periods. Empress Dowager CIXI remains one of history's most controversial figures. Her portrayal has varied greatly over the years. Some see her as a ruthless autocrat whose conservative policies hindered China's progress, while others view her as a shrewd and capable leader who navigated immense challenges with remarkable skill. Recent scholarship has begun reassessing CIXI's contributions, offering a more balanced perspective. Historians now recognize the complexity of her position and the difficult choices she had to make. They acknowledge her efforts to blend traditional Chinese values with necessary modernization, a balancing act that was not easy to achieve. CXI's legacy continues to influence China today. Her reign set the stage for the eventual transformation of the country, navigating the delicate balance between preserving cultural heritage and embracing modernization. Empress Dowager CXI remains a symbol of resilience and adaptability her life a testament to the complex interplay of power, tradition, and change.